to give them more of. It's kind of like the relationship with God. You know, everybody has a different relationship with God, but he loves them all. Mm -hmm. The same way with a good father. He loves all these kids, but he's going to give some more than others. It's not that they're favorites. It's just that the fact that they need more or whatever it is he gives them. So what do you say to the kids that's watching you give more to the one? How do you soothe the kids who feel like, darn, this kid is getting, whether it's more time or more financial or more whatever. How do you soothe the other kids who feel that there's an unfairity to that or feel a way about that? It's the same situation with, with God and with Christians. With Christians think, you know, there, there's Christians that are got more more favor on their life than others. But it ain't that God loved them more. Maybe they just needed more whatever God was giving them. So, you know, there's there's never going to be something you could tell someone. It's just the fact that everything in life is relational. So basically, when you it's the, depending on the relationship that each child have with their father, that's how it's gonna it's gonna look it's gonna look like okay if if one child has uh more say more intimate relationship more honesty more just telling it like it is that relationship gonna be different than a, a person that's private with their parent like eh, i really don't want them to know my business they ain't gonna be the same relationship so that's for it depending on what kind of relationship you have with your father is gonna also be depending on what kind of relationship that is. So, you know, I can understand that some kids just don't want their daddy to know what they into. They mm -hmm. don't want them to meet their friends because, you know, I know my daddy, he judgmental. Uh, <laughs> he is. <laughs> I ain't showing him my dope dealing boyfriend. <laughs> well, I don't blame you. I wouldn't either. I don't know who be dealing with dope dealers. Me either, please. but I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... So obviously, like you, um, you were married um, to our mom for a period of time. Then you know y'all went y'all separate ways. How do do you think that? Um, how if so, do you feel that um, your divorce affected your 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 children in any kind of way? And if so, like what way you think? Yeah, I think in everything that the parent does in their life with their children, it affects them. And you know when you get divorced from. Uh, your children's mother even though you may feel compelled that you had to do that but it affects the children too because they're going through that same divorce just like you're going through it it may not affect you, you might be saying hey, I'm glad I got out of that but the kids are suffering from it so that's what I'm saying, anytime you're in a relationship and you got kids mm -hmm. everything that you do in that relationship, whether you think it's good for you it may be bad for the kids. So that's why a lot of people say, well, I'm just staying for the kids. Well, it ain't a bad thing for people to stay for the kids because the kids are affected too. So in every relationship that have kids in it, all that you do affects everybody, just not you and the person you married to. Because mm -hmm. that was the other thing I was going to say. I was going to say, what do you, how do you feel about people that say um, they just stay for the kids? Hey, it's a sacrifice you make for your kids. And like I said, uh, it does affect the kids too And every kid is affected differently So yeah You know if you get married and you have kids I would say if you can Stay in it If you can't well I understand that too But it's going to be some collateral damage mm -hmm. So out of The marriages that you have um, What do you think that you could Out of the marriages that you have That you didn't that are uh, that are no longer. Yes, you're currently married now, but out of the, your marriages that didn't work out, what do you think you could have done better in those situations, if anything? Because yeah, the first thing I think that anybody could do in any relationship that don't work out, choose better. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. You always, you know, in different as you grow in life, you're at a different level, different maturity level. So really, when you talk to about, when you talk about marriages. The first thing an individual can do mm -hmm. is choose better. And that means you have to be in a better space in life, spiritually, emotionally, mentally. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you get married at a time that you should never get married in because you're not in the right space, mm -hmm. emotionally, spiritually, or mentally. Mm -hmm. So if you you get that those three things right, you, normally you would choose better. But 
anytime you're choosing when you just got out of a relationship, mm -hmm. you haven't worked out some of the problems that you were experiencing in your last relationship, you just bring them to another relationship and then you don't see well enough to choose what you need in life at that specific time. So really it all starts with you. Then you can always blame, you know, the relationship on the other person. Mm -hmm. But I always believe that it's you first. Mm -hmm. Is, do you believe that because it's the man, or you, you mean, you, or do you just believe it for like the individual? No, I believe it's for individual. Cause see, uh, if a woman marries wrong, it's because she in the wrong space. Mm -hmm. You know, you married the wrong person. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you shouldn't have married him because, but you was in that wrong space emotionally, spiritually, mm -hmm. and mentally. Or vice versa for a guy, he could have married wrong too because he was in the wrong space. Mm -hmm. So if if you, if you make sure that. You got yourself together. Mm -hmm. Nine out of ten times, you're more clear to, to choose somebody who's together too. Okay. Now, um, what you know, you've been more seasoned at this point in in all things. What what would you think um, if you had to just guess? Perhaps what would be a nice settling down age, starting uh, family age, settling down, marrying, starting family for the first time. You know, everybody in a good um, space. Maturity. I mean, everybody matures at a different level. You know, some people are are, are, are mature, wise before their age. You know, mm -hmm. they be young. They could be 19, 20 years old, and they're very mature in that age. Then some people can be 40, and they're still children. Mm -hmm. So there is no such thing as the right age in the sense that you could put a number on it. Mm -hmm. But you can definitely tell when a person is seasoned even though they may be young, they, they already know how to treat an individual. They already know how to be a wife or they may already know how to be a husband. I say the good keys is that, first of all, if you want to marry somebody, you already look at their lifestyle and say they got to have their own house, car, stuff like that. If they don't have that, then, you know, you ain't marrying a seasoned person because everybody who got, gets married, you got to have a place to stay, you got to have a job, you got to have uh, 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 money enough to take care of yourself, for sure. Mm -hmm. If you're not doing that, then I ain't no use of talking about you ready to be married. You, you can't even take care of yourself. How can you be ready to be married? Now, what? Now, now let's talk about the job stuff. Because like, everybody don't work. I mean, you know, people have other ways of, of, of bringing finances into the home. Um so, like, how do you feel about people, you know, like, if, if, if for instance, I just use myself for, for lack of a better person. If I was to, you know, say, hey, listen, you know, I'm interested in someone. He's not working right now. But, you know, we have a really great bond. Everything is, you know, I'm in love with him. He treats me well. But right, he just, he's not working right now. Like, how, do, how does that work? Like, because a person can always get a job later, maybe, or, or whatever. Like, what if everything is good but that? And my question is, how does he eat? How does he pay rent? You know, uh, because you got to eat. And you got to have somewhere to stay. So I have to ask them questions. Okay, he don't work. How he eating? How he sleeping? So what does what does the guy look like? What does your son-in-law look, like, son look like for you? Like... In the event that your kids get married and you're not here to finance the wedding and celebrate and enjoy everything, what does your son and son in law look like for you? Does he look the same for all of your daughters? Like, just do you have a, a stereotypical person that you feel that you want, or you just feel like each daughter is probably going to marry a different kind of guy? Or just do you have a, a certain kind of guy in your mind for like what is what is your 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 um, son-in-law look like for your middle child and your youngest child and your oldest child? No, I don't think they're going to look alike. I don't think, because like I say, all, all your children have different needs. Mm -hmm. So all my children have different needs. But mm -hmm. what I would like for all my children spouses to look like is one, to be a provider, mm -hmm. meaning that they got a husband that can bring in some legitimate income, mm -hmm. provide a good place to stay, a good lifestyle, and most importantly, a good uh, Christian foundation, whatever you want to call it. Some people you know, like to call it Christian, but I'm saying you have to have a relationship with God. So a relationship with God, 
being able to be provide. Now, how that looks, it can come in any kind of package, you know, because mm-hmm. all of them are going to have different packages. Mm-hmm. But if the man cannot provide a good uh, Christian foundation or provide just the simple basic needs, then, you know, to me, they're not going to pass the test. Because that's it's simple. It ain't, it ain't it ain't it ain't a whole lot of stuff I demand. I'm saying, but you to be a man, you have to be able to provide somewhere to stay, something to eat, and a good Christian foundation. Simple things like that. That don't really require much. That just to me, that should just be in the package. So why you ain't say that's like a man answer? What what about? How he love his how he why you why you ain't saying nothing about I want to make sure I want I would love my son I want my son in law to love to love and be crazy about my daughters and well, where is the emotional aspect of, of that because that just sound like everything you said your daughters could do for their own self your daughters got their own house your da- your daughters could work all that where is the other part of of that why why you why don't men tap into that like why you didn't say nothing about how he you how you want the man to treat your daughter or it, or do you feel like that's their love language well, some, the providing some of it is their love language but i don't talk about love because when you start talking about love, people get into the emotional aspect. If you talk about the Bible definition of love, I can rule with that. But I'm saying the love of, of, of emotion, that happens. You know, the old saying, love don't pay no bills. You can have a nigga love you to death, but won't work a, a job. You know, that ain't going to work. That kind of love don't work. So I'm saying if he's a provider, he loves you because he's providing for you. He going out every day making sure you got somewhere to stay. You got something to eat. That's love. But if a nigga talking about he loves you but won't work on a pie factory, uh, you don't want that kind of love because that's not love. That's all emotion. And one thing about what I know about love Every woman I ever married loved me until we was in that courtroom getting that divorce. So the emotional love, it changes. But real love, it don't. So that's why I don't emphasize nothing about love because just because that man get up every day and go to work and 